Islam has a long history of being an Abrahamic faith with the Quran being revealed to Muhammad by Allah. Or was it? The Quran is the holy text of Islam which was written in the 7th century in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. But Islam has a very controversial history and its past is not so Abrahamic. Islam was founded in the middle of pre-Islamic Arabia where the main religion was paganism and Christianity and the surrounding nations. This is why many people speculate that Islam is just a mixture of Christianity and paganism. But is this true? Well, we have to look at the life of Muhammad and prove the authenticity of the Quran and its origins. Before Islam was founded, historically the only Abrahamic faiths were Christianity and Judaism. So this must have meant that Muhammad and his family either practiced paganism, Christianity, or Judaism. But how can I confirm that Prophet Muhammad was a pagan? Saudi Arabia being exclusively predominantly pagan alludes to Islam potentially having pagan roots. But since Arabia was surrounded by Christian and Jewish nations at the time, Islam should have some sentiments of Christianity and Judaism as well. If you want to create a false religion to appease the masses, the intelligent thing to do is to create a religion with a mixture of everyone's beliefs. There is no historical, religious, or archaeological evidence that Abraham built the Kaaba stone prior to Muhammad's claims. Muslims today claim Mecca was a major trading city and known as a site of worship for over 2,000 years before Muhammad. How could this be true if many expeditions made to the surrounding areas of Mecca never mention Mecca? If Abraham really traveled from Hebron to Mecca to build a major site of worship for the Arabs in the form of the Kaaba, wouldn't others have come across or documented it in the past 2,000 years prior to Muhammad? We see no mention of the Kaaba stone anywhere religiously, historically, or archaeologically prior to Islam until a group called the Quraysh tribe, which was one of many Yemeni tribes. They were a pagan group in the Middle East who encircled around and worshipped the Kaaba stone prior to Muhammad. They used to circle around the Kaaba stone seven times and pray five times a day to the Kaaba. This is very similar to the practices of Islam today. So just looking at basic historic facts, we can see that Muhammad gained a widespread amount of ideologies and knowledge from the pagans around him. The pagans would also put their deities inside and around the Kaaba stone as they would encircle it and worship them. They worshiped 360 different deities with Hubal being the chief pagan god they worshipped. This is very important because this is where everything starts to connect. Hubal was the moon god, very similar to the goddess Diana or Baal. Hubal's symbol included a crescent moon and a star, which is why the Islamic flag today has a crescent moon and a star. Don't be fooled. Muhammad also worshipped the 360 deities alongside the pagans naked. It was only later in his life when he abolished the pagan statues to bring Jews and Christians to the Islamic faith. What's interesting about Muhammad is that he was an illiterate man in the middle of Arabia. One day he was sitting in a cave and had a divine revelation from Angel Gabriel about the Quran. When we look at Galatians 1.8, it states, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. This is exactly what happened to Muhammad. Lucifer or a fallen angel came to Muhammad and shared a different gospel than that which was taught to the apostles of Jesus Christ, given that he did not make this vision up. So scripture makes it very clear and warns us hundreds of years prior to the Quran to be aware if any so-called angel comes to you with a different message or gospel. Scripture also warns us that even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So Muhammad having this new message revealed to him by angel Gabriel doesn't surprise me. So now that we have discovered that Islam has pagan roots, where's the evidence for its Christian and Judaism roots? Well, it's all in the Quranic Arabic language of the Quran. For example, Jesus in Arabic is Yasu, not Esau. This translation of Esau for Jesus comes from a Greek Hellenized version of the Hebrew name Yeshua. The Quran also teaches that Jesus, Yasu, and the Holy Spirit taught the Gospel and Torah to people. 
This is very similar to the Bible, yet so different, because Muhammad also teaches that the Trinity is wrong, but does not properly understand the Trinity. He claims that God, Jesus, and Mary are a part of the triune God that Christians believe in. But this is so far from the truth because there are no biblical texts or historical beliefs to affirm this ideology. Muslims will usually counter this by creating a false narrative that Christians in those days worship Mary as a part of the Trinity. This is a conspiracy theory which is not backed up by any credible scholars. This is a huge reason why Muslim women today wear head coverings and use beads. It is very closely resembling Catholicism or early Christian traditions. We know that the Roman Catholic Church also uses beads for the rosary prayers, and many early Christian sects often had women covering their heads. So Islam is literally just a mixture of paganism and Christian tradition, with its own version of the story. This is why Islam must deny the Bible and say that it has been fabricated and altered, because if the word of God is true, then Islam crumbles into pieces. God bless you guys. And remember, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me.